It's just made me see different avenues of life. This is Bola. Star Productions. Just get ready, catch me at a mo. If you're feeling bad vibes, you know where your home is. Been in BMS, I'm only rolling with a realist girl. Rolling with a realist. Just get ready, catch me at a mo. If you're feeling bad vibes, you know where your home is. Been in BMS, I'm only rolling with a realist girl. Rolling with a realist. Yeah. Catch me at a mo. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the, the river or something like that, ain't it? Yeah, Colin was telling me one time. So Bolo, so it's Bolo Brook Youth Centre. Um, and so the Bolo Brook is, a, is an old river um, that runs through South Acton and down into the Thames. It's now covered over. Um, but round here, so you've got Bolo Lane, Bolo Bridge Road. Um, so presumably used to be a bridge. And the area of South Acton used to be famous for its laundrettes. Um, so yeah, sort of washing in the river. So yeah, that's the name. Bolo is unique, I'll say that, yeah. Bolo is experiencia. A sense of direction, I would say. Because I've done so many things that I wouldn't necessarily have done if it wasn't for Bolo, I think I'm more open to trying new things now and I wouldn't have necessarily done that before. Like before, I, um, I'd be like quite closed off and things like that. But now when the new opportunity comes, I'm more open to try it. You can come in, meet like just to say hi to someone and you end up like in the studio, playing around in the studio, doing like artwork pieces, playing pool, PlayStation. Like there's not one thing you can do here and it's not like a set of rules you can do here. Like it's not like you have to come in, sign in and do this activity. Like you can literally do whatever you want to do as long as it's reasonable, but like do whatever you want to do. And it's just like, like a little safe space. It's really fun, yeah. I've been going to Bolo for three years. I was like 15. I was with my mate and she brought me here. I don't know, I was kind of nervous, I guess. Not nervous, but like uncomfortable, I don't know. Cause it's like, I've never been here before and it, that kind of faded away pretty quickly. But I don't know, you just feel more free. Like there's no rules, no teachers, no, nobody looking over you, no cameras. It's just like, it's free. In here, it's kind of like, home I guess I don't really need to be anything that I don't want to be but like first impressions are everything and I have to present myself in a certain way so, like when I first came here I had to present myself in a certain way but like now nah comfortable I like how people at work always push me to do like better some of the things I've done I wouldn't think I could do it if I wasn't pushed we've had loads of debates and loads of discussions like proper group discussions and that just talking about like homophobia or religion or racism and knife crime and stuff like that. The great thing is that now I'm open to other people's mindset. So I can still have my opinion, but at least now I understand where someone else is coming from. So next time to someone else, I can be like, I understand where you're coming from, but here's what I'm trying to say. So it's good to be open-minded. You can still keep your opinion, but it's good to understand different people as well. I think that's kind of cool. But like, I'm telling you, when you're in this space, it's like, good positive energy like you've got music different types of people around got like spaces to sit playstation pool table like you've got other things to occupy your mind you got to think of like the downside as well unfortunately like there's not every colin in our house like my mum is not a colin she's not someone that like continuously persistently motivates me to do things daily like not everyone doesn't have that we only get that here we don't take that home with us. We don't see that on the street, so yeah. The main reason, there's two reasons why people first come here. The first is to be with their friends and the second is to come to the studio. Um, those are the two. People don't tend to come here to go, oh, I really want to explore my identity. You know, they come to hang out. Um, and then, and we allow that. We allow young people to have time 
you know, and some people may only come here like a week and then you never see them again. And some people, as they grow and they grow in confidence in the space and they build relationships with us and with other young people, then what brings them back is that feeling of this is, this is our space and this is a safe space. This is a space where we can, you know, relax, play around, but also be pushed and try out things. Um, we can make suggestions. We have some kind of ownership of this space. We can say, oh, Colin, you know, can we cook? Or can we do a project? Or can we do this? Can we do that? And it's like, yeah, we're trying to make it happen. Um, so in a, in a society where young people feel they have very little ownership over anything, where public spaces are constantly shrinking, this is a place which is theirs. And eventually, I think that's the thing, which means that young people come back, you know, for 10 years, over 10 years. You know, we have people who've been here hundreds, some people over a thousand times. Um, and it's not just because it's a cool place to hang out, right? There's an emotional attachment to it and to what you can achieve. Yeah. To follow is like a safe, safe zone. Like, do you know what I mean? You can, you, I would, I would, if personally, if I didn't have follow, man, I literally don't know where I'd be. Like when man got kicked out of college, innit, yeah? I had nothing to do. I was like, cool, the first day I was like, all right, cool. Let me go stand outside college because uh, I can go back my friends in it. Week two of that, I was like, oh my God, I can't do this forever. I need to do something, bro. So man, man came bollow in it, like, like, and I started chatting to like, to like Brian, who, who's the careers advisor here. And he gave me, he gave me advice and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? You see self acting. Yeah. Like people think it's bad now, bro. If, if bollow wasn't here, bro, this would be 10 times worse because people wouldn't have had something to do. Them days where Bolo wasn't open when I was younger, innit? Yeah, I'll just be like, fam, what the f we do now? Like, like, there's nothing to do. Bolo is something to do. You're less likely to start trapping in Bolo, innit? Because, because bruv Colin's there, and bruv Colin, Colin gets mad. If you even build a zoo, innit? Like, do you get what I mean? Colin will be on you, innit? So, so this, it just doesn't work, innit? Like, bro, because, but say if Bolo just didn't exist, yeah? You're just left to your element, bro. You can do whatever the hell you like. Like, and a lot of people, they don't have the, voice to say don't do that do you get what i mean so bolo in a way is that voice to say don't do that you, you can do more do you know what i mean because a lot of people don't have that do you know what i mean and when you occupy people you feel like they've got a, they've got something to do so it gives them a little bit of purpose that's that's what adults have they have pubs and stuff like that do you get what i mean this is like this is like a pub in it but like instead of alcohol there's knowledge the best drug of all time <laughs> Oh yeah, they gain, gain a lot because some, some of the young people, they're quite young, they started off just coming, just getting to high school and then they will come here and they gain confidence in what they're doing. You know, some of the young people use a studio for the music pro product and stuff like that. And they build up their confidence and also make quite a lot of friends. You know, they might come in on their own and maybe in a couple of months they build like a friendship group which they can bounce from each other. So that is positive. Uh, we got to speak to a UN, UN ambassador like, just a few years back. We got to speak to them about like housing and like share our opinions. And that's a good thing about this place. You get to share your opinions and speak to people that you wouldn't usually speak to on a day-to-day -day basis. And like you kind of get heard, um, especially like coming from like estates and things like that, like they actually listen to you and you can talk to them. And yeah, so we actually like charities. I'm working with like um, SOAS. We did like focus groups on like young people. Like not everybody here is from the same background and like same cultural religion. So I think you learn a lot because we do a lot of projects where you're talking about yourself and like doing artwork about yourself and things like that. Like the race project that we did. I think you learn a lot about other people and like their background and their culture and like their home settings compared to yours. So you do get to learn people, like learn things about people. Having our exhibition, yeah, in the Tate of all things, I think personally, yeah, that's just the biggest achievement ever because we did it like a group of young people from Bolo, us, like this small little youth club in South Acton, this rundown area, created something big enough to be in the Tate. And people don't understand that because it's a bunch of people from ethnic minorities. Do you know what I'm saying? Like we don't usually get heard. And when we do, it's not in the it's not in a positive way. But for us to use our experiences and just put all our emotion into this one thing and share it with other people, 
it was beautiful man like we had people like random people all walks of life all different types of ages just coming in wanting to interact with us genuinely wanted to hear our stories and what we've been through in return i wanted to hear their stories and what they've been through whether it's different whether it's good or bad it's like your experiences between one another, no matter how different it could be, is I just think it's a, just a beautiful thing. And being able to do that through the work of me and my peers, it's unbelievable. It's getting attention from so many different people. And I feel like if this is just the beginning, God knows what's next. Like, what, what else can we achieve? We're in the big leagues and we're just getting started. And it's, it's, I'm really proud to say that we didn't need to put anything on for show. We didn't need to lie. We didn't need to, you know, exaggerate the truth. We're just saying it from our hearts and what we've been through. Like, we're just saying it as we see it. And like, it's so refreshing to know that there's different types of people that haven't come from where we come from, that haven't experienced what we have experienced, actually want to come together with us, sit down with us and actually not even just talk, but listen. It's such a beautiful thing to be listened to. It was really, it was just a beautiful scene. Forget interacting, just walking by and seeing all those people, you would just want to involve yourself and join in. And a lot of people did. And I'm thankful for it. And yeah. something about you I've never come across before You've opened up a new door for me There's so much we can explore But it's really up to you if that's how you want it to be There's something about you I've never come across before You've opened up a new door for me There's so much we can explore But it's really up to you if that's how you want it to be Brand new, are you brand new? Brand new, brand new to me Brand new, are you brand new? Brand new, breathe to me So a feeling it's mad you think it's all talk but i ain't really on a real thing with ya i ain't playing around with ya no more solo shots of me i want you to join me in my picture is that too much to handle or do you want to find out more things you can do first things first are you finna be my boo finna be my boo yeah yeah secondly can i trust you can i trust you yeah yeah third of all can you see us too? See us too? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. If all of those things are a yes, then life will be blessed. Then we don't need to worry about the rest. Then we can do us, they can do them. Yeah, if all of those things are a yes, then life will be blessed. Then we don't need to worry about the rest. Then we can do us, they can do them. Yeah, brand new. Brand new, brand new to me. Brand new, are oh yeah, brand new? Brand new, breathe to me. Brand new, are oh yeah, brand new? Brand new, brand new to me. Brand new, are oh yeah, brand new? Brand new, breathe to me. There's something about you I've never come across before. You've opened up a new door for me. There's so much we can explore, but it's really up to you if that's how you want it to be. There's something about you I've never come across before. You've opened up a new door for me. There's so much we can explore, but it's really up to you if that's how you want it to be. Brand new, oh are yeah, brand new? Brand new, brand new to me. Brand new, oh are yeah, brand new? Brand new.
it's, it's liquor.otb. So I'm Ruben. I've been working at Bolo for about 10 years. I'm a music tutor, producer, engineer. So I work with young people. They might want to come and record a song. So through like songwriting, kind of lyric support, engineering, mixing and mastering their music, teaching them beat making, production, giving them advice on the music industry, just general support throughout, you know, what they want to do. I guess we're always very much led by the needs of the young people. So we don't really force, outside of project stuff, we don't really kind of force certain topics. It's very much listening to their needs and what they're interested in, but also being prepared for whatever's thrown at us. People come, use the studio, make music. There's not always a connection with young people now to performance. So like the end goal of making a song is making a music video. There is like, it's kind of, I guess, the way that the music scene works. If you're in a band, you you think about gigging. That's how you write songs, you, you picture yourself on stage playing it. Whereas you don't with kind of rap and drill and Afrobeat and stuff like that. It's only the superstars that like tour and you know, people people think of a gig, they think of wireless, they don't think of like the local live music venue. So to try and push that element, we've tried to organize our own music events um, in kind of like local venues and stuff. Um, and it's been kind of like a push of like, you're, you know, you, if you're in the studio, you can polish your sound, you can make yourself perfect. If you do a music video, you can, you can decide how you look and you know, you can spend a lot of time getting it to what you want. Whereas live performance is kind of like a one-time thing. So it really shows people's talent, basically. Um, so yeah, we spend quite a lot of time with our vocal coach, Fiona, working on people's like performance techniques, their projection, um, you know, working on like PA versions of their songs, you know, how they present themselves, how they kind of perform, stuff like that. And we did a few of those. And also the music festival of Box moved to Gundersby Park, which is in the borough. They were interested to work with like local communities. Um, so we did a music project with them and that that kind of finished with them opening one of the stages. So the young people from here had like an hour slot to perform. And that's like still talked about as this like this big, this big event, you know, people are like, oh what's you know, what's been great? And they go, love box, love box, love box. Um, I think it felt like an unattainable thing. You know, it was kind of like that wasn't that's like further in your career. And they really enjoyed the opportunity. And also they really enjoyed just meeting other artists, meeting their heroes, stuff like that. I think they really enjoyed mingling with, you know, the big names that were performing at the festival. Um, and I think it gave them a lot of confidence to kind of want to do it more. So it's a good youth centre for people to come and express themselves, be themselves and just not be doing bad things. I feel like the first time when I came here, I was a bit more shy than how I am now. I'm a lot more confident. It's made me who I am today. It's just made me see different avenues of life. It's also helped me to, to see how other artists are and how they work in the studio or how they perform. It's made me more creative with my words. Normally we have vocal sessions with the our vocal coach that comes here and she's really good at working with us on our performance, our deliverance, our control of our voice, the ways that we can be different with our voice and our character. Ruben is the person that is always in the studio with us, helps us record our songs, always gives good feedback and yeah I think I've actually become a better artist um, when working with Ruben. Colin is the person that runs Bolo here. He's like the person that really helps with us um, getting these shows, meeting new people, um, encouraging us to go in the studio, make songs, and the person like, that does all the stuff behind the scenes when it comes to who's gonna be seeing us or who's gonna be um, going to these next projects, who's gonna be a part of the projects. And so, yeah, Colin is a good person for us as well. Like, he's a very nice person, very caring, very supportive of all of us in different ways. Like, not only in music, he helps a lot of people with different things. I think proudest movement was probably Love Box. Yeah, I think that was for everyone as well. And yeah, it just came out really well. And I felt a lot more confident after that performance. And then afterwards, we got to meet certain artists that were performing as well. So, Georgia Smith, Charles Gambino, 
there's, there's a big list. Think if they can do it, I can do it. And that's what everyone should have in whatever they do in life. I think for the studio and for like film projects, we always try to do stuff to like a professional standard to prepare them for when they hopefully do go into a professional world and they are ready for it, they're prepared for it as well. And so there's like crazy dedication of some of the people that come here, like the hours that are put in. When a 16 year old is doing that, I'm quite impressed by how a lot of young people are quite dedicated to the craft. Um, but then some people just come here and it's just like a mess around and it's just like, it keeps them keeps them entertained. So there's a big a big range of engagement when it comes to opportunities. Ruben, Ruben, Ruben. It's been my first engineer. Like from the old center, using a sofa behind me and Mike, it was crazy. I feel like he's played an essential role in like the nurturing of my own talents as well because obviously you can imagine over the years just how much time spent together, just getting to know how my voice works, how he works. And he always knows how, like, what sort of vision I'm looking for and it somehow ends up being, like, just sick. I don't know if I ever wanted to try anything, like, Ruben's the guy to, like, make it happen. So, yeah. The one thing I was find with music, because it is, like, it's a bit of a backdrop that people can be a bit more expressive about themselves. Like, you can have young people who, who just won't open up, won't say anything, and then they'll surprise you one day and they'll have this song about, how their dad's never been around or their relationship with certain people in their family or like quite positive things about their friends, you know, like, and this can be maybe on a drill beat, maybe on a different style. Doing an aggressive song is like, it's almost like a barrier. It's like, I won't, no one will take the piss out of me if I do this, you know, it's like, I will, you know, no one's, no one can say anything about me. When you start opening up and trying to do something more difficult, you're kind of like exposing yourself a bit more and that takes a bit more and confidence so we're always trying to push that side of how people use the studio and saying look you know this doesn't have to go anywhere this is like this is a free space you can have it private you can experiment and push stuff and they're usually the tracks that people are most proud of For this life, will I ever know? No. Many lies being told, we don't even know our history. Faces of ancestors be a mystery. Spend a day in my kicks, you'll be praying all the misery. Seriously, look at the papers. Specific religion and some races getting hatred. There's something going on, and no one's saying car is safe. But I don't understand it. Someone told me where I've landed. I don't know what it be. They drop or is it like what repeats? Ooh, ooh, we fall back like what's up and I was used to. Used to. I don't know what it be. They drop or is it like what repeats? Ooh, ooh, we fall back like what's up and I was used to. Used to. Some pray to the Lord, some pray to Allah. Tell all jinns they better stay away far. In my white tea, crispy like a wafer. Got baby trying to kiss me an hour later. To my family, I'm a monster. I'ma change their views all gradually and proper. Reality just got hard. This pain's weighing heavy like Anthony Joshua. At the same time, it's making a man in me prosper. With all the shit that I don't see, I've got to testify. If most your homies smoke, you might be the next to buy. And ever did it, so you take it just to test and try. It ends up being like a ticket to an extra flight. I try, but I cannot. I'm infinitely stoned with my click like Thanos. Ooh. And don't be acting oblivious if you knew the mission. Was crying from the inside, spotting who would listen. I don't know what it be. They drop who was it like what repeats? Ooh, ooh, we fall back like what's up and I was used to. Used to. I don't know what it be. They drop who was it like what repeats? Ooh, ooh, we fall back like what's up and I was used to. Used to. Look. It's getting dangerous fam I blaze the am and think of a courageous plan I need bands to my name before I raise a man Fam, I'm even sharp like a razor can Had to remind myself I can't be afraid of dying Angst is searching God like I was afraid to find him It's all eyes on me, yeah All eyes on me, yeah. I don't know what it be They draw through, is it like what repeats? Ooh, ooh, we fall back like what's up and I was used to Used to, I don't know what it be. They drop who was it like what repeats? Ooh, ooh, we fall back like what's up and I was used to. Used to, Fuse, the engineer. 
song I was used to, used to, used to. Yeah, um, yeah, I think definitely like we can say that there are young people, it's always hard to identify what would happen if you weren't here, but there are young people who wouldn't be alive today if we hadn't been here for them. Um, so there's physical safety, right? There's actually providing young people a space where they can just go and be young. It's very hard for young people to be young sometimes outside and home is not a safe space for a lot of young people. or well, certainly not a space they feel comfortable. So yeah, definitely that. And then secondly, there's safety in the social sense. Um, that as a, as a young person, you are navigating a lot of questions around identity and who you are and where you fit in the world. Um, and, you know, certainly for middle class kids, you know, you go through like emo phase or whatever, seen as normal. Whereas for a lot of the kids, a lot of the young people that we work with, there's a real risk in experimentation um, with identity, a risk of kind of exclusion, a risk of judgment, um, you know, of not, not being able to, you know, kind of basically getting shut out from your peer groups. And so one of the things which is really important in Bolo is providing a space where people can experiment. And so it's not just a physical safety, it's a social safety of saying, yeah, come and, you know, if you want to come and listen to Taylor Swift, come and listen to her. You know, if you want to come and have a dance around and just be silly, that's fine. This is, a, this is actually kind of acceptable here. I mean, I do it. Um, and so that kind of means, well, anyone can do it, right? And that's, you know, part of, part of the joy of Bolo is the ability for young people just to be silly and to dance around and have fun. It's not all serious, you know? And that's quite rare, unfortunately. 100%, I swear to God. Without Bolo, I'd be like a, a lot more involved with uh, street life and stuff like that and like you see Bolo is it, it's, it's giving me something to do and not just hang out on the sh like do you see what Bolo is yeah like like if Bolo wasn't here all of it would just spill out onto the streets because you're literally giving you're giving them a room to, not even a room but like a place to chill in innit where you can chill with your friends and you can do things like whether that's after school or like after college or like when you've been kicked out of college and, and you'd have nowhere to, you wake up and you have no aim in it. Like you, you have nothing to do. Like because, because they don't support you after that. Bolo is the support after that. Do you get what I mean? Like the college don't care about you, but Bolo is Bolo's, Bolo's always going to care about you whether you're doing good or bad. You get what you put in with college in it. Yeah, but, but Bolo will always try to push you regardless. I think because you can talk to people here and you know that like within this area, it's not the safest area, like a lot of things do happen. I feel like when you're in bo inside Bolo, um, you are safe. Like there's not a time in Bolo that I felt unsafe. And I feel like a lot of other people that I know have been in situations because they know they can talk to the, the workers here. They, it makes them feel safe. Like it makes them feel secure in a way. And like they know they've got someone that's got, them back, got their back, like no matter what, so yeah. I mean, everyone comes here for different reasons. I mean, we work with hundreds and hundreds of young people um, and they all come here for something different and they all come with different challenges. Um, so structurally, the main challenges are housing, um, you know, especially as we get to the 18, 19, 20 year olds, really, really struggle with housing. We do a lot of work around homelessness, um, obviously employment, um, and then this kind of, it's really difficult for young people to position themselves to know this, where do they sit? There's, you know, in the South Acton, um, around here, there's a very, very active drugs trade, um, which is actively inviting, you know, young people to participate in and young people can get a lot of, you know, easy access to money initially and status, um, and they know where they sit. It's kind of a comfort zone to a certain extent. And then you have a society which promises, you know, what Western societies promise, right? Like work hard and you'll, you'll, you know, slowly move up and get a mortgage and all of this kind of stuff. And a lot of them want that, but don't feel that it's designed for them. They don't believe in this progression. You know, a lot of them don't think, you know, it's like you go to a job, you work hard and you don't get treated well. Someone doesn't turn around and say, oh, you've done really well, let's pay you more. That's not a lot of their experiences. A lot of their experiences bouncing from, from one job to another of kind of this idea of um, 
yeah, kind of survival in the moment. And so when you're trying to position yourself between what you know, what's immediately around you, and going out into a wider world which you don't know and which you don't feel welcomes you, all of that leads to all of these challenges. So it leads to people getting involved in drugs and gangs and all of that kind of stuff. It also leads to people not really reaching their potential, not feeling that they can go for jobs that they should go for, move into areas, move out of here, go traveling, see the world. That's, yeah. So it, it, it kind of shuts people down. Um, and that's what leads to all of the other issues, I think, on the whole. Me up, they used to turn me down. They were shutting doors, I wouldn't turn around. Hit the block and did the run around. I couldn't fast track into the second round. Let's just need a mic and that pepper sound. It's the blueprint, how you break it down. Get the money, then you pass it round with the same niggas because they still around. I couldn't hit the banner with that times free, but I couldn't trust a soul that was high key. They were plotting on me, that's why I see. So when niggas change, they never changed me. It just made me stronger. Get the racks, pick the microphone. We used to play with packs. Smoking cookie when I'm making tracks. Bitch, I'm self made and I point out the facts. Like when I first started, it was just people like brainwashed kids like me thinking like crime was a good thing. Like I think my number one dream 15 was being arrested with my friends, like in the same prison space. And I just think like, now I look on it, it's kind of funny, but it's, that's not something that I want to be, I will look forward to. That is not like, that's not the dream getting high, smoking cigarettes. It's not the dream. So this place, Colin getting me involved in things and you know, getting me out of trouble and the constant stop hanging around with them, stop hanging around with them was kind of what dragged me away from that. Like, he had like a serious talk with me because I had this innocent incident and he had a serious talk with me and he's like, I could have died like, twice and like he said the third time you might not be so lucky and I just thought like I don't want to die 15 like I've got shit to do I haven't finished high school and I just slowly became I kind of distanced myself and I just slowly became high by with the people I was just getting into major trouble with 100% I think I would be on some street corner doing some shit with some people that I shouldn't have been doing it with 100% yeah. I'm happy and I'm sad. Only because like some people are like moving out the area, you know, like because if you do move the real rent's going higher and that. So some people actually can't afford the rent, so they are moving out of the area. But if they're staying in the area, it is nice. Like I wish they could. I personally wish I lived in South Acton so I could move into like one of the new flats, but I don't live in South Acton unfortunately. Like some of my cousins and that did live in the old building, so they're getting knocked down and that. So they're gonna move like further into South Acton now, or like out of the areas. Has changed a bit. Sometimes I forget what South Acton used to look like, but one day I remember. Like it all come back to me at one point. It was kind of sad watching because being from here and living here, I've watched it from the start to it all finalised and now. And during the process of that, I've seen people get chucked out out of London it's kind of breaking the community do you know what I mean because if not it's not just me that's lived here like my whole entire life like you've got other families who all know each other and have they've been they've got kids that are 25 and like this is their community do you know what I mean and what's beginning what's 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 happening now is that it's taking away people that you know I think if follow shot for most of the young people who've been coming, it would have a devastating impact because a lot of young people live, who access follow anyway, live in um, quite tight conditions and that they don't have that much space at home. Um, so this is a place where they can have their own space, um, they can explore their friendships, their identity, um, in a way that's more difficult at home. It would be devastating also because there's not an opportunity for them to sort of play and experiment in other ways with music, art and other such things that they do get to do here. You've got your youth worker and you can access them pretty much whenever you want after school and there's always time and space for that. 
like at home is what it's overcrowded or like it's just like a social service thing or something like that. Some people just don't have any anyone there at home, do you know what I mean? Some people are just literally out here on the streets, like 24-7. Got told they closed most youth centres in London, which is that is mad. That's like that's I don't that's one thing I don't get. How can they close a lot of youth centres? And it just draws me back to the like the line where I said if a child is not at home and they're not at school and they're not in a youth centre or anything, where are they? When you're out there, it's so, it's so easy to get caught up in things. Like, honestly, it's proper easy. Being at Bolo kind of opened my eyes to opportunities that were beyond what I could actually see before. Just to better the community or yourself and, do you know what I mean? We've got police and ambulance outside. Already, I don't even know what's happened, but I mean, obviously, in the last 10 years, 11 years of austerity, there's been massive cuts to youth services, they're not statutory. And so, as councils have had their funding cut, they've in many places been one of the first things to go. Um, I think it's very difficult. I think we as youth centres have to be careful about saying we're, we're a solution um, for you know, wider societal woes. We're, we're not. Um, but the cut in youth services, I think, has been kind of uh, as it's a symptom of a wider issue, which is the kind of the monetization of space. Um, the, you know, the kind of dividing up of who belongs where and this idea that you can just have a space for a space, you know, you, like, like a town square where everyone can just go and be. No, you have to, you know, it has to be a box park now with pop-ups, you know, you can't just have a place where, you're, where people go and hang out and you're, no one's making money out of them or anyone, right? And so that's, I think it's, so whilst I think we can't say, oh, you know, like we said, all the riots in Harringay happened because of the closures of of youth centres, no, the riots in Harringay happened because of police brutality, but the that wider idea of exclusion of young people, of these young people are deviant, these young people are um, shouldn't be here um, and shouldn't have a space and should be shut out and excluded is part of the idea which has, I think, led to the fact that people think youth centres are not really needed. It's not a basic right for young people to have a space which I think it should be. Rizzo made it spicy. Na 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 Yeah. Obviously, listen, I told man already that I'm gonna start singing on jewel beats. You don't wanna listen, but... Shout Rizzo on the production, you get me? <laughs> Tazzy. West Finest mm. Ghost and grind Man out to coast and grind Put in that time Then pray till the Lord will shine Ghost and grind Man out to coast and grind Put in that time Then pray till the Lord will shine Ghost and grind Man out to coast and grind Put in that time Then pray till the Lord will shine Ghost and grind Man out to coast and grind when at time, then break the Lord your shine. Nobody knows what I'm on. No one. Seat has jump on a jolting sway, is a lotion done. Tazzy now speak, move silent. Trust no one, no one to confide in. Good, you move mad if you want violence. Use my fist, no 15 inch knife thing. Like, I'm no statistical, I see free, no I see you, but you don't see me. Go ghostly grinder, that is the key. You see me shining now, oh, that's sweet. You need to understand, we ain't no G's. I ain't no cop, but you need to freeze. Might catch a flight, love the sun and sea. Hit up the air, but go duty free. Ghost and grind, man, I'm to ghost and grind. Put in that time, then pray till the Lord will shine. Ghost and grind, man, I'm to ghost and grind. Put in that time, then pray till the Lord will shine. Ghost and grind, man out to ghost and grind. Put in that time, then pray till the Lord will shine. Ghost and grind, man out to ghost and grind. Put in that time, then pray till the Lord will shine. You 
They all think Taz come innocent, but he didn't know Taz come diligent. A diligent rap, a diligent sing, and I got bros that diligent ching. Them man chickens, let me get a few wings. It can be a Sam's or a KFC ting. Aye. <laughs> It can be a Sam's or a KFC ting. I could go Nando's if I want spicy Brown and bougie made her my wifey I don't really care if these men don't like me Couldn't give a toss, that shit is unlikely Grab bae and go Where's that you can't find me Got all of my bros, all of my bros and loved ones beside me Ghost and grind, man out to coast and grind Put in that time, then break the load you'll shine Ghost and grind, man out to coast and grind Put in that time, then break the load you'll shine no we tryna get that high grade grinding doing up on me no hybrid every night and day i say my grace grinding hard no one can take my place ghost and grind ghost and grind ghost and grind pray to the lord you'll shine we're trying to set the world on fire All young people want to experiment and take risks. That is an inherent part of being a teenager. And if you can't do it somewhere that's relatively safe and you don't have interesting ways of doing it, so you don't have access to uh, music, arts, uh, more playful activities, you will find another outlet for those risks. So it's not that risk taking doesn't happen in Bolo, it's that it's actually a safe, um, kind of conducive risk taking. Otherwise, it just happens on the streets and it's a different type of risk taking. Another way I think it keeps people safe is that they can, I think for the most part, talk about most of the experiences in their life and get some sort of input or support that they wouldn't necessarily get elsewhere. Um, I think even if they're accessing uh, some kind of support at school, there's a self-censorship, like there's just certain subject matters you wouldn't talk about at school or with your parents. Whereas here, I think you can just lay it all bare. Uh, it's definitely kept me focused on the, the mission, I say, like the goal, because there's a lot of distractions out there. And uh, luckily I was just able to just, again, recognize opportunities in front of me and then just so I capitalise on it. It's helped me a lot with my confidence and, and my self-esteem and how I view myself. It's such a diverse place and everyone that goes to this youth club come from a variety of different backgrounds. It's, it's just something different. You feel like everyone's, everyone's welcome. In a sense, it's like home to a lot of people. It gives me a place to just talk and be me. And it's like, it's like therapy without having to pay for it. I feel like they should come here to find out what they're passionate about because I feel like a lot of young people nowadays don't really know what their passion is and Bolo is a place where it can help you find that passion.